Okay, so now we would like to welcome um, Miss Door something house, I know it is, right? The Bark House. <laughs> From Procter and Gamble. And welcome. And if I get up and leave, and, and Senator Patrick as well, we do have to be in the Senate at 3 o'clock, and I should probably check in with my caucus before then. So excuse me if I leave. But welcome. Right. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank and you. If I could just interrupt for a second. Yes. Um, a written statement from um, Mr. Barkhouse is on page 17A. Yes, I have it right here. <clears throat> okay. Thank you very much. Um, on behalf of Procter & Gamble, it's my honor to speak with the Maine Citizen Trade Policy Commission today and to share information about why our company supports passage of the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, the TPP. I'm excited that although this is my first time to visit Maine, P&G has operated uh, a large manufacturing facility in Auburn since 1997. We are the lar largest employer in Auburn, and I'd like to thank Senator Volk and uh, the entire commission for the opportunity to come and speak with you here today. Founded in 1837, P&G has grown to become a global leader in fast-moving consumer goods, focused on providing branded consumer packaged goods of superior quality and value to our consumers around the world. With $76.3 billion in global sales, P&G sells products in more than 180 countries and territories with manufacturing sites spread throughout the U.S. and international markets. We own and operate 26 manufacturing sites located in 20 U.S. states and territories, as well as some 100 manufacturing sites in foreign countries. Nearly 5 billion consumers use our products. Commerce and trade is part of P&G's corporate DNA. We actively support implementation of high-quality, multilateral, regional, and bilateral trade agreements as policy tools to accelerate economic growth, reduce tariff and non-tariff barriers to trade, and to promote regulatory coherence across geographic borders. While more than 60% of P&G sales come from the company's international operations, our growth outside the U.S., where 95% of the com world's consumers live, do not come at the expense of U.S. workers. In fact, one in five of P&G's U.S.-based jobs and two in five in our company's home state of Ohio support our international business. These high-paying U.S. jobs are in areas such as marketing, innovation, and supply chain management. Here in Maine, P&G directly employs more than 400 people who come from 70 communities spread over eight counties. In addition, our manufacturing plant indirectly supports another 230 jobs in the state of Maine outside of direct payroll. We've invested over $350 million in the Auburn plant since 2000, and we annually pay millions of dollars in state and local taxes. The Auburn plant is the only PNG plant in the United States and Canada producing Tampax, the world's leading brand of tampons. Our products are shipped to customers throughout North America, and our employees are some of the world's most knowledgeable and experienced producers of top quality feminine products. So why is trade important to PNG? Existing free trade agreements have helped to eliminate or reduce trade barriers globally, tariffs, quotas, and unnecessary bureaucracy at the borders. P&G benefits from these agreements because they have allowed us to create efficient, reliable supply chains that have expanded our access to markets ac around the world. In every market where we operate, our company benefits from economies of scale and from the common regulatory and legal foundations on which U.S. and WTO trade agreements are based. TPP goes even further by addressing 21st century trade issues, including e-commerce, cross-border trade data flows, and unnecessary regulatory differences. We believe the TPP agreement will not only benefit our current and future operations in member countries, but it also lays the groundwork for PNG to enjoy similar benefits in countries that uh, join this important trade agreement in the future. Our supplier, suppliers, many of whom are small and medium-sized companies, will also enjoy the benefits of the TPP agreement because there is a special section uh, in the agreement related to small and medium-sized companies. 
The TPP region includes some of PNG's largest and fastest growing markets in, in the Asia Pacific and Latin American regions. Our company's long-term growth will be determined by our ability to compete on a level playing field in all markets. In 2014, TPP countries accounted for 36% of world GDP, and the Peterson Institute estimates real income growth of $465 billion by 2030 for the 12 country group, including $131 billion in U.S. real income growth. Increased personal wealth in TPP con member countries will allow more consumers to choose PNG's high quality daily use and personal care products when they're shopping for themselves and for their families. In addition, the TPP agreement will serve as the first U.S. trade agreement with five of the member countries, including Japan, the world's third, is, third largest economy, as well as Vietnam and Malaysia, two of PNG's fast growing emerging markets. Provisions within the agreement, including the chapters on electronic commerce, customs administration, and small and medium sized businesses, complement our company's future business growth in all of the TPP member countries as online and non-traditional distribution models and sales channels rapidly expand. P&G operates close to our consumers. We invest in manufacturing and distribution capability in key regions and markets, allowing us to tailor products to meet the wants and needs of consumers. T TPP's tariff re reductions will benefit P&G as import duties will be reduced or eliminated on raw materials and finished products shipped within the TPP-based supply chain. Tariff savings are important to PNG's bottom line and allow us to supply a competitive mix of innovative and high-quality products to consumers in TPP markets. Citing cosmetics and beauty products as an example, the economic benefits of reduced tariffs, like Vietnam's elimination of its 27% tariffs on cosmetics in year four, will provide an increasing variety of cosmetic and personnel <coughs> care products to a growing group of middle class consumers. PNG anticipates major benefits from TPP co member countries agreement to establish or enhance new protections for investors and reduce non-tariff barriers. The agreement extends investors state dispute settlement or ISDS to five new markets, Malaysia, Vietnam, Brunei, New Zealand and Japan, and it enhances investor protections in the six markets that enjoy existing trade agreements with the United States. In addition to dispute settlement, PNG strongly supports outcomes in the TPP chapters on transparency and anti-corruption, on labor, intellectual property rights, environment, and competition policy. Compliance with local laws and policies designed to govern company behavior on important policy issues like these is one of the most challenging aspects of investing and doing business in other countries. We expect provisions within these TPP chapters to help validate PNG's high standard business practices in all countries where we operate. And it will further strengthen business practices among our partners, suppliers, and customers, thus ensuring a more level playing field, competitive playing field. TPP also provides rules on cross-border data flows that will allow PNG to fully utilize technology and modern sales platforms to serve our consum consumers. Today's consumers, especially those in the Asia Pacific region, increasingly shop online and purchase our products via computers, phones, and other mo mobile devices. By ensuring the freedom of cross-border data flows, generally pro prohibiting data localization and protecting personal information, TPP will boost electronic commerce among the 12 participating countries. PNG expects some of our most important long-term gains to stem from increased regulatory coherence. The TPP agreement's cosmetics annex commits partner countries to important underlying principles of good regulatory practices. It affirms a risk-based, transparent approach to cosmetic regulations. It promotes international standards and approaches such as these, those developed by the International Organization for Standardization. The Cosmetics Annex recommends that regulators move away from bureaucratic pre-market approval systems and rely on shared responsibilities between manufacturers, the system that is currently utilized in the United States. The Annex also supports 
the industry's long-standing commitment to avoid animal testing by pro prohibiting such tests when validated alternatives are available. And it eliminates requirements for exports to be accompanied by certificates of free sale. These provisions broaden a number of benefits to all TPP company, or countries that we already enjoy in the ASEAN Cosmetics Directive and in the cosmetics re regulatory provisions in the Andean Regulation 516 of the Pacific Alliance Partnership. The reduction in regulatory barriers will cut, reduce costs and simplify business pro processes as duplicative and ineffective regulations are eliminated between the member countries and increase the speed in which we can deliver the safest, newest, and most innovative beauty and personal care products to our consumers. In closing, we will support, or Procter & Gamble supports immediate passage of the TPP agreement because it will accelerate economic growth, reduce tariff and non-tariff bar barriers to trade, and increase regulatory coherence among member countries. The TPP agreement is an important opportunity for P&G, our employees, shareholders, and for the communities where we live and work. Thank you for the opportunity to offer P&G's perspective on the economic impact of this historic agreement. And I look forward to answering any questions that you might have. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Barkhouse. Interesting. Any questions? Ms. Treat. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. I'm very glad to have you in Auburn and the long-term supporter of many of your products and user of them. Um, I, uh, I was interested in your focus on the cosmetic annex, and I wanted to talk about that a bit because that is one of the things that's in the TPP that actually, um, for me, raises a lot of concerns, and I wanted to bring those out and, and get your reaction to that. Um, in the United States, you know, there's a, when we hear about the TPP, it's often about um, making sure that policies are a certain way in, in some other country. But my concern about the cosmetics in annex, um, which is part of the technical barriers to trade um, chapter for those who are following along, uh, is that it will have potentially uh, an effect on domestic policy here in the United States and, um, uh, and concerns that, in fact, it, it will make it more difficult to um, enact protections for people who use cosmetics and other personal products, which we're talking about many of your products and things like sunscreen and everything else. It's not just uh, makeup, um, which is barely regulated right now in the United States. Um, unlike in the European Union, for example, uh, cosmetics essentially don't have to go through the kind of um, safety testing. They don't, they're not covered by an overall chemical uh, protection law. And in some states, um, state legislators are kind of taking up the slack, uh, including in California and even in the state of Maine where we have an overall uh, law looking at consumer products uh, that at least affect children. Um, as I read the uh, annex, it's not just talking about duplicative and burdensome standards, but it, it makes certain statements that I have some concern will end up depressing the opportunity in, in around this, this country to actually start addressing potential problems in the cosmetics industry, including provisions that say here that it's uh, understood and it's, this is in this trade agreement, it's understood that these cosmetic products pose a less potential risk to human health or safety than medical devices or pharmaceutical products. Well, that may or may not be the case, depending on the pharmaceutical product and the cosmetic, some of which have been found to contain um, materials such as mercury and things like that and lipstick, uh, which is quite uh, toxic. Uh, and so I guess I I'd be interested in, in just hearing from you about that, you know, why I shouldn't be worried uh, that, that there will be an effect on um, U.S. domestic regulation that is actually um, long overdue. And then I'd just like to make one comment in your overall um, view that this is going to boost economic activity. Uh, you mentioned the Peterson study, and I just 
want to mention that that study specifically stated that one of the base assumptions is that um, employment would be full employment, and it didn't look at whether there would be any job losses. And some other studies, including the Tufts study, found that the U.S. would experience net job losses of almost half a million, doll half a million um, jobs. So I just wanted to sort of put that out there, that there are different studies out there that came to different conclusions, and the Peterson is one that specifically may, may had an assumption that there wouldn't be any employment losses without actually looking into the data on that. Okay, thank you. Um, regarding the, the questions and comments about the cosmetic annex, um, while I, I understand your, the concerns as you describe them, um, the Procter & Gamble uh, has a long history um, of producing top quality products and of constantly innovating um, to ensure the, the health and safety of the, of the consumers who use the products that we produce. Um, and we have robust um, safety testing and are constantly, uh, as I said, innovating and developing. And in addition to, to that, we're also complying with um, all law everywhere where we, where we do business, which is just about every country on earth. Um, and um, at the same time, uh, in, in the U.S. system, there are requirements in terms of um, when we become aware of a concern or something like that, um, we, we have to report that information to the appropriate regulatory bodies. And so um, we are not anticipating any kind of uh, change in the U.S. Uh, regulatory and safety regime as a result of, of this uh, trade agreement. Um, in fact, what we're anticipating is that um, other competitors um, with, with whom we regularly compete from overseas uh, that their products are actually going to have to come up to U.S. standards um, that we currently already meet uh, all over the world. And, and so we don't, uh, while I understand the concerns that you expressed, um, our position is that uh, the safety and, and the efficacy of, of the products that we produce are going to continue in that direction. Um, so I don't know if I can help more on that particular topic before I talk about the second issue. Well, that you're I mean, about. The, the, the concern isn't that it will, the concern is right now cosmetics aren't uh, required to meet particular health standards for toxics, for example. That isn't the case. And in fact, in terms about um, maybe you have the requirement to report things, but in terms of the government require, you know, capacity to um, uh, require recalls and all of that, it's limited. Uh, and so there are those, and 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 there there's a number of organizations there, especially representing women who use a lot of makeup, um, that are concerned that there ought to be greater uh, testing and um, oversight of the cosmetics industry and personal products industry uh, to ensure that they're safe. And this is strongly opposed in general by the industry. I don't know what P&G's uh, specific position is. My concern is that the cosmetics annex is not limited to uh, so-called duplicative uh, regulations and that sort of thing. It has in it provisions that seem to go to um, weighting the scale in a, uh, 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 an assessment of a product towards a, a finding that uh, it's not, doesn't pose any risk. I mean, there's language in there, and I don't know how that's going to be used ultimately uh, but with, particularly with ISDS in the TPP as a whole, um, there is concern on my part that activities at the, both the federal and state level uh, towards um, really closing a regulatory gap that we have in the U.S. Um, will be, you know, basically prevented 
by that language or at least delayed or potentially subjected to some uh, to a level of legal challenge. So that's my concern and um, you know, I just wanted to express it that there's another side to this and getting those products more speedily to market if it means uh, that they aren't meeting uh, new safety standards would, would be a concern. Thank you for that. Um, regarding the, the initial part of your, of your most recent comment about toxic uh, substances, um, we are constantly uh, working to avoid and prevent against any kind of toxicity in any of our products. Um, our products are daily use by people and at the same time, um, certain cleaning products, of course, have a level of toxicity uh, for, for people. And so um, all products have um, instructions on, on proper usage. Sometimes that's ventilation, sometimes it's using it with water, et cetera. And uh, in the case of cosmetics, um, certain products are for uh, on the skin only or uh, should not be in your eyes or should not be ingested. So we have those types of standards, and, and we're constantly working on those and, and ensuring that, that they're safe. At the same time, um, people have, uh, there's, there's phone numbers and other information. We're always gathering information from our consumers uh, if there's any concerns whatsoever about the product, and we're tracking that and reporting it to regulators and others. So, uh, and, and then finally, on, on toxic um, materials, there's actually a, uh, a law that's going through the Congress right now or being considered at, uh, in Washington on toxic substances. And so um, we have been working with everyone um, on, on all types of law and regulation just to make sure that um, it's a science-based approach. Because one thing that sometimes happens is that somebody says something but may not have scientific information to, to help illustrate whether that is true or not. And uh, with all of our product development, that's a, that's a clear focus for us is, is a science-based approach. Um, in terms of ISDS, um, my understanding from the TPP agreement is uh, that the ISDS provisions do not limit uh, governments um, on questions of health and safety. And so uh, if, if there is an issue where the U.S. government in this case uh, needed to regulate or a, a local government or a state government needed to regulate um, in order to promote the health and safety of our citizens, um, my understanding is that ISDS is, is not a, uh, a way for a company to prevent that from happening. Um, and if it's okay, I'll, I'll talk for a moment about uh, your other comment about the Peterson Institute study, and, and you mentioned the Tufts study. Um, there's actually a lot of uh, trade literature online and elsewhere that I can um, share with you if you'd like on uh, discussing the Peterson study, the Tufts study, and, and other types of studies about um, economic modeling for this particular trade agreement. And um, the, the Peterson Institute study uh, uses a methodology that is, um, I understand, generally recognized by most economists as, as being a very reasonable uh, way to model the effects of a trade agreement over time. Um, at the same time, a lot of uh, economists are saying that uh, employment nationwide in the United States right now is actually um, approaching what, what economists would define as full employment. Um, and so uh, I think that as, as they're looking at these numbers and, and showing, our purpose in, in referring to that, to that study uh, or to any study is that as the economic uh, growth takes place and as, as everyone in, in the economies um, derive wealth from trade, uh, which is sort of the core issue in the Peterson study, then everyone is in a position, in a better position to purchase uh, Procter & Gamble products. And, and therefore, we, we view that trade in general is a positive thing. So, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you, Mr. Barkhouse, for, for giving us our presentation today. It was really informative. And, uh,
looking at the time, we have about eight minutes left.